Good Sunday morning to everyone. This is Shindo. This morning I'd like to talk about Saudi Arabia. I'd like to tell you first that I was told a few years back that Saudi Arabia would be an instrumental part of what will lead to the brink of World War III. Now, I did not believe the person at the time I was told this, but I have come more and more lately to rely on this person and their world view. I have an article here from USA Today. Of course, it will be in the description box, the link. The title of this article is Why Obama Doesn't Want 9-11 Families Suing Saudi Arabia. If you're tired of the coverage of the debate, when the debate isn't even until tomorrow, perhaps you're jonesing for some real news. Well, that's why you come to my channel. If you want real news and you don't just want to hear about every single thing that they can think of about Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, if you want to break from that, and actually hear about things that are happening outside of the bubble of politics, then please subscribe to my channel. Like, comment, like an adult, and share my videos. Before getting into this article, I'm going to give you just briefly what the relationship is between Saudi Arabia and the United States and how important it is. People don't understand why the United States lets Saudi Arabia get away with what they get away with. Well, I'm going to explain it to you with a very short history and economics lesson. In the early 1970s, Richard Nixon took the United States off of the gold standard. Our money was no longer backed by gold. Just a little aside on this, I hear a lot of people who invest in gold saying that Nixon was wrong in doing this. No, Nixon was not wrong in doing this. Had Nixon not taken the United States off the gold standard in the early 70s, the United States would have seen a Great Depression Part 2. This isn't some conspiracy nonsense. It's just simple economic fact. Had he not done that, as bad as the 70s were, and I can remember the 70s a little bit, and they weren't so good economically, much worse than what we saw back in 2008. Um, As bad as they were, the 70s, they would have been much worse had Nixon not done this. Now, at this point, our dollar value was tied to oil. It's what you call a floating currency. The value of the American dollar goes up and down. Now, still to this day, the American dollar is considered the strongest currency in the world. The United States tying its financial system, the dollar, its currency to oil is what makes Saudi Arabia significant to the United States. Saudi Arabia promised, basically promised, to only sell its oil for dollars. If you want to buy oil, pretty much Saudi Arabia and any other country in the world aside from a handful, just very few, in order to buy oil from Saudi Arabia, you have to use the American dollar. So this keeps the dollar strong as long as people are buying oil. Lately, Saudi Arabia has artificially reduced the price of crude oil and therefore it has affected the value of the American dollar. So when you wonder why the United States let Saudi Arabia get by with 
having some ties to, to the 9-11 attacks. This is why. They're not going to tell you this because, well, quite frankly, because they don't think you're smart enough to understand it and you're just going to get angry. And they have some reason to believe that in this country. So if you're wondering why Saudi Arabia got away with supporting 9-11, it's because our monetary system here in the United States of America is based on, the, on Saudi Ar Arabia only dealing with dollars when it comes to selling their oil. If Saudi Arabia were to change that policy, which they could overnight, it is in their best interest not to do so right now, but if they choose to do so anyway, then our monetary system, the United States of America, would collapse. So that is the reason, folks, why Saudi Arabia gets away with what it gets away with. Incidentally, Israel, who is in that region, is there to protect the United States' interest, and that is why we give so much money to Israel. So if you're wondering why that's the case, I'm telling you, that's the case. If you look these things up for yourself, I'm not reading from anything. This is what I was educated in. So I'm going to read this article, but I'm telling you, what this article says and the reality of the situation are going to be two different things. They, they dumb things down for you folks. That's what they do. But that, what I just told you, is the reason why the United States sort of shrugged its shoulders when it comes to Saudi Arabia. And that is the reason why Obama, rightfully so, folks, rightfully so, Obama has vetoed this bill. Now they're going to go um, over Obama's head and override this veto. But Obama knows that Saudi Arabia has us by the nuts when it comes to our financial system. They do. It's in Saudi Arabia's best interest not to start only accepting gold or something else, some other kind of currency for their oil. Right now, it's in their best interest to only accept the dollar. But if that were to change, then they would have the United States over a barrel when it comes to our economics. Now, let me read this article from USA Today, Why Obama Doesn't Want 9-11 Families Suing Saudi Arabia. Washington, President Obama made good on his threat to veto a bill allowing lawsuits against foreign sponsors of terrorism Friday, setting up what could be the most contentious veto override vote of his presidency. The Justice Against Sponsors of Terrorism Act, or JASTA, would provide an exception to the doctrine of, quote, sovereign immunity, which holds that one country can't be sued in another country's courts. It is an extraordinary three-page veto message to Congress. Obama said he has, quote, deep sympathy for the families of victims of terrorism, but, the, but that the legislation would interfere with the president's ability to conduct foreign policy. Quote, I recognize that there's nothing that could ever erase the grief of 9-11 families had, had to endure. Obama said. Enacting JASTA into law, however, would neither protect America from terrorist attacks or improve the effectiveness of our response to such attacks, unquote. 
The veto came on the last possible day for Obama to act under the Constitution, which gives the President 10 days, excluding Sundays, to veto a bill before it automatically becomes law. The White House has been stalled for time in hopes of changing minds on Capitol Hill. Quote, we certainly are counting votes and having a number of conversation, conversations with members of Congress in both parties and both houses of Congress, unquote. White House Press Secretary Just Ernest said Friday, quote, I'm also acknowledging that the politics of the situation are really tough. And if anything, I think that it is an illustration of the principled nature of the president's position. The president's not blind to the politics of the situation, unquote. Families of terror victims have lobbied for the bill, which would allow them to sue Saudi Arabian officials whose inter intelligence agency has suggested ha had ties to the hijackers of the four planes using, used in September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks on New York and Washington, but the bill would also allow lawsuits against other countries as well. The White House has argued that the bill would prompt other nations to retaliate stripping the immunity of the United States enjoys in other parts of the world, quote, and no country has more to lose the context of these exemptions than the United States of America, given the preeminent role that we play in global affairs, unquote, Ernest said. The veto was the 12th of Obama's presidency and the first to face the serious prospects of a veto override. It would take a two-thirds vote of both chambers for the bill to become law over Obama's objections. Concerns that Congress was already aware of when it passed the bill by voice vote, suggesting near unanimous support. The bill now goes back to the Senate, where its sponsor, Senator John Cornyn, Republican Texas, has already promised quick action to override. Quote, it is really inexplicable to me that the president would talk about vetoing this opportunity to the victims of 9-11 and their families to be able to make their case in court, unquote, he said last week. Quote, I would love to have him sign the legislation into law, but if he decides to veto it, I hope he does it quickly so we can just as quickly vote to override that, that veto. There's no reason why we need to make these families wait any longer, unquote. Even if Congress sustains the veto, both major candidates for president said the support, they support the measure and would sign it. Democrats Hillary Clinton said she'd support the legislation, quote, to hold accountable those responsible for the 2001 terrorist attacks. Republican Donald Trump called Obama's veto, quote, one of the low points of his presidency, unquote. Both the House and the Senate had hoped to depart Friday for a fall recess in order to campaign, but are stuck in Washington to hammer out a spending bill by October 1st to avert a government shutdown. When a Congress is not in session, the president can issue a, quote, pocket video, pocket veto, but which can't be overridden. But, that's, but that tool is no longer an option. Most of Obama's vetoes have come in the past year, and Democrats have been able to rebuff override attempts, but even the threat of a veto has been enough to stave off some GOP legislation. Last week, Obama boasted to Democrat donors that he had control, hadn't had to wield his veto pen, excuse me, often as some had predicted given Republican control of Congress. He said GOP leaders, quote, can't even pass their own priorities so that it, I don't generally even have to veto anything because they can't get organized enough even to present the cockamamie legislation that they're interested in passing, unquote. The White House has acknowledged the possibility of an override, quote, you don't have to have an advanced degree in math to understand the significant support that exists in the United States Congress for this bill, unquote, Ernest said last week, quote, but the concerns that we have about this legislation are significant 
and there are many members of Congress who are sympathetic to the argument, unquote. What they're not telling you is just how much control Saudi Arabia has over the value of the American dollar. And they're not going to tell you because that would indicate that somehow the United States of America is vulnerable and, well, they don't want you to, to know that, now do they? Well, we'll see how this goes. I mean, it's going to be overridden. The veto is going to be overridden, but let's see what Saudi Arabia does after that happens. What we are on the brink of, folks, it's just we just keep getting closer and closer and closer to the edge of this abyss. And are you hearing about this from anyone else? Is anyone else speaking practically to you? Because, believe it or not, I understand why Obama vetoed this bill, and I agree that he should have vetoed this bill. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't let my um, emotion run away with me and say, let's get those Saudi Arabians, because I realize if the United States starts to have problems with Saudi Arabia, that it could mean some terrible economic crisis. When we're already on the brink of an economic crisis, we're already in a huge bubble when it comes to the stock market. So folks, it's only a matter of time before this stuff starts coming down. Now, if you want to hear about this stuff, if you want to hear about practical news, you want someone who's going to give it to you straight and not let his emotion uh, tarnish the, uh, the news stories that I choose to talk about and how I choose to talk about them. I also, folks, have a education in this stuff, history, economics, government. So if that's, if that's what you care about and the fact that I am not putting commercials on my channel, then subscribe to my channel. Click like for my videos. Comment on my videos. Like an adult. Like an adult. I don't, nobody likes waking up in the morning half asleep and going to their videos to have some smart ass little pimp nobody call me out and call, and call me names. Who, someone who doesn't even know me. No one likes that. Okay, no one likes that. So, let's comment and be adults and share my videos. This is Shindo. Have a good Sunday.